If you have a modern garage door with one or more torsion springs around a shaft above it, and you need to replace your old-fashioned chain or belt drive door opener that attaches to the ceiling, you might want to consider upgrading to one that attaches to the wall. This is the Genie 6172 wall-mounted garage door opener. I'm going to show you how easy it was to install by myself and why I think it's worth the money. Surprisingly small box. My old chain drive door opener was on the fritz and out of warranty, so I wanted to replace it. I did some research and decided I wanted to try a wall-mounted garage door opener because they are quieter and they allow me to take better advantage of the overhead storage on my tall ceiling. I looked at four models of wall-mounted openers. The LiftMaster is essentially the same as the Chamberlain, and they both have a wired door control button and separate devices for Wi-Fi and to monitor the cable tension. I decided to go with Genie for two reasons. First, the door control has a wireless Bluetooth connection, so it would be much easier to install. In addition, Genie has tension monitoring built into the head unit, so I saw that as one less point of failure. I bought model 6172 because it comes with built-in Wi-Fi connectivity using the Genie Aladdin Connect app. You can also get it with a battery backup option, but I didn't bother because I have a whole house standby generator. I paid $446.30 in June 2022, but you can check the latest price using the link in the video description. A wall-mounted opener can be easily installed by yourself, whereas overhead openers usually need two people. Before disconnecting the old opener, I used a decibel app to measure the noise level. Okay, the max was 79 decibels. And it shakes the whole house. You could hear it everywhere throughout the whole house. The first step is to insert these little white spacers on the wheels at the bottom of the door. The spacers are needed to make sure that the little spring arms don't get pinched by the track. The spring brackets come with self-drilling screws. I installed them into empty holes on my roller bracket to make things easier on me. The spring gets attached to a nylon loop that goes around the door cable. These get installed on both sides. Next, I gave it a test to see how it closes manually. As you can see, my door was too tight with those spacers, so I had to loosen the bolts and spread the tracks to give it more room. The opener can be installed on either side of the door. I chose the right side because I could use an existing outlet for power. Not very big. I installed this L bracket on the left side of my motor, which will be facing my door. The motor unit attaches to the torsion shaft with a coupler that works for keyed or non-keyed shafts. Mine was a hollow shaft with no key. With a level on top, I made sure the unit was straight before securing the L bracket and coupler bolts. With the emergency release pulled, I gave it another manual test. Safety sensors need to be installed on both sides of the door. I initially installed the sensors at bumper height, but later moved them down to the standard 6 inches from the floor. I started with the left side because that had the longest wire. Be careful when using a staple gun because it can easily break the insulation and cause a short. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Thank you. 
If the sensors are installed correctly, they should both be solidly lit without blinking. The light kit is wireless, so you can install it anywhere close to a power outlet. The door control is also wireless and battery powered for complete flexibility. You can see my old door control was behind this refrigerator, so I decided to put the new one on the other side. With the new opener installed and working, I did another test to show that it's about 10 decibels quieter than the old chain drive unit. It's so quiet that the dog doesn't hear it opening inside the house. It's always a good idea to test the safety beam and make sure it reverses. Remember how Chamberlain and LiftMaster openers had a separate component for detecting cable tension? When the genie starts to close, it vibrates the door and senses the bounce in those springs. Keep an eye on that spring arm. That bouncing is an ingenious way to ensure the door isn't stuck at the top as the shaft starts turning. You may have noticed that I didn't bother installing the electronic deadbolt. The opener locks the torsion shaft, but without the deadbolt, the door can be technically lifted by someone trying to break in. But it would be dead weight without the springs to help lift it, and my door is really heavy, so I don't see it as a big risk. One thing to note is that garage door openers these days seem to ship with only one remote and no outdoor keypad. So I bought an extra remote and keypad separately. Programming was easy. Just press the learn button for a few seconds. Then when the purple light is blinking, you can pair extra remotes or home link transmitters in your car. This Genie unit has built-in Wi-Fi, which I set up using the Aladdin Connect app on my phone. I have it set to get notifications when the door opens, closes, or detects errors. I also have rules to let me know if it's left open for more than 15 minutes, and it will close automatically if it's left open after 10.30 p.m., so I never leave it open all night. A good belt drive door opener costs around $300, so this wall-mounted unit was definitely a premium, but it was worth it for me. What do you think? Leave me a comment and let me know. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.